Thanks so much for joining us, Dr. Adams. You know, a lot of us feel really confused uh, about what's real, what, uh, even if we're, where we're getting uh, news from trusted sources and stuff, that just changes so quickly. Uh, the situation's developing quickly. There's, you know, different strains. There's new vaccines. Um, you know, I, I'm curious, you know, how do you, how do you feel as a doctor looking at this, this really strange year that we've had? I'm definitely feeling the urgency of, um, of the situation. I'm definitely feeling like there is very rapid spread that um, we need to um, take action on. So when I um, hear from people that they are, um, you know, they have questions about the vaccine, I'm very keen to try and help answer um, questions to try and to try and help. You know, and there is a lot of uh, questions about the vaccine. There's different types of vaccines that are going to different regions in the country. There's lots of hope that these vaccines will kind of help us get back to life as per usual. Uh, but there's also a lot of suspicion. Obviously, uh, Indigenous people are right to be wary of government wanting to inject us, given this country's uh, history of using uh, us as medical guinea pigs. So, you know, as, as an Indigenous person, as a doctor, how do you, how do you uh, get that sorted through in your head? And what advice are you giving to people who have those concerns? Well, I am a, a Western-trained physician. I'm not a, uh, a, say, a traditional medicine person. So definitely, um, um, you know, I have to proclaim my bent. I, <laughs> I believe in modern medicine for sure, and uh, I have been watching um, the safety of the various stages as of development um, of the vaccine, and also um, seen and heard how devastating um, this infection can be. So the long and short of it from from me is that um, it's it's a fairly safe vaccine that's been developed uh, quite rapidly to the best of our abilities um, and that um, it is largely safe for the majority of, of people. So, you know, there's some people who feel like, you know, this did happen very quickly and it, of course it needed to happen quickly, right? But these, there's, there's people who are worried, you know, the trials didn't go on long enough, there wasn't enough testing, you know, were these approved too quickly? You know, how, how, do you, how do you convince people that, no, it's okay, it's safe, go get it? Yeah, we have a long history of vaccine development uh, in, um, in the Western world. You know, there, there's a, um, a number of uh, levels to the development of a vaccine that we have followed, including um, preclinical trials or testing um, um, on animals before humans, and then the clinical trials with um, volunteers, like starting with just a few volunteers up quite um, simple because we've, you know, we're quite aware that people are nervous about um, the ingredients of uh, vaccines and the kinds of reactions that they can have in extreme cases. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's new strains of COVID. These vaccines were developed before that. You know, is there any point in getting the vaccine or is this gonna just, this virus just gonna keep changing, rendering the vaccines useless? Uh, at this point, um, we don't. We, at this point, we see that the um, vaccine that has been developed um, will be useful uh, against the strains that we're seeing. There is one variant out of South Africa that is concerning, um, but we will um, be looking at that. I, I would still recommend to people that um, because we don't have um, a, a couple of those strains, the the UK strain and the South African strain, or in very much in Canada, if at all. Mm -hmm. um, that the current vaccines are safe and effective. So, I mean, I guess this is the best we have right now. I mean, nobody is probably proclaiming this to be, you know, the be, the be all end all. It's kind of the best that we have. How soon are the vaccines going to be available in First Nations and Northern communities? What's the plan for this rollout? Can you tell us that? Yes. Um, well, uh, the National Advisory Committee on Immunization has um, identified Indigenous people as a priority population for vaccination in the first quarter, um, January, February, March of 2021. And um, some communities have already started to receive their um, vaccinations, um, most notably um, in the territories uh, and in uh, British Columbia. And I know that in um, Ontario, some of the indigenous vaccinators have are lining up for um, their vaccines. Vaccinators are um, going to be a that the, um, the effectiveness of the vaccine, 
95 uh, percent is actually quite high. Hmm. The, um, the flu vaccine averages around 50 percent efficacy, maybe 50, 60 percent, um, which is, which is um, somewhat lower. Uh, I'm curious, you know, is there, because some people are saying, I guess it depends on what region you're in, you'll get a different type of the vaccine than you would in other regions. Are there, is that something to be concerned about? Are some of the vaccines better uh, name brand ones than other ones? Um, the, the effectiveness of the Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna vaccine are fairly similar, um, but they are different in their requirements. The Pfizer vaccine requires an ultra low temperature around minus 75 degrees Celsius. So um, it is very limited in how it's able to travel. So that Pfizer vaccine is largely only available in the cities and not in indigenous communities. The Moderna vaccine, though, has a minus 20 requirement and can travel much, much easier. And that's the one that's going to communities um, currently. I guess I would be remiss if I don't ask you, are you going to get the vaccine? Uh, do you want your family to get the vaccine? Yes, I'm, I am counting the days until my family can have the vaccine. I, I actually have a, a mother-in-law in a long-term care home where mm -hmm. there was an outbreak. Uh, my parents are, are in their um, 80s, and uh, I will breathe easier <laughs> for sure when, when the vaccine is available. Yeah. Uh, and I guess, is there a place that people can go access information, just, you know, a one-stop shop? Because there's, there's I probably didn't get to all of the questions that a lot of people have. Where can we find details and info? Um, well, the Public Health Agency of Canada has some excellent um, information. Um, the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta has some, some good information. Uh, so those are some, some good places to start. For Indigenous-specific stuff, the um, First Nations Health Authority in BC has put out lots of COVID-friendly um, products that are specifically for Indigenous communities. Thank you so much, Dr. Adams, for taking the time to chat with us today. Very important topic. You stay healthy. Yes, and you as well.